So are we going to talk about the fact that you've been holding back on your whistling ability? What you mean? I didn't know until the other night that you could whistle songs now. Oh, did did Honeybun tell you what I've been doing? No, I heard you. I heard you. And I said something to Honeybun about it, and she was like, yeah, he's being sneaky about it. And then she told me. But I, I noticed you the other night. We were at your house, and you were whistling a song. Yeah. You weren't just doing your little... Do 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 do. Oh, dude, I got do 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 do. You got you got moves I've never seen before. Yeah, man, I'm getting pretty good at it. Yeah, I'm impressed. I I just tend to do it out of tune and have no rhythm whenever our mutual, our mutual friends friend. are out. <laughs> Turns out that's his kryptonite. <laughs> it just pisses him off. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if like. We're playing like Catan. Yes, <laughs> I'll I'll do it just because I know it. Just fucking. Hey man. Him. Hey, you know what? Uh, you know what might help if you if you if you like work towards uh, doing a song. Oh like yeah, a he, whole, tells, he tells like me a whole that. melody. Yeah, he tells me that all the time. That's how I know. <laughs> I know. That's how I know I've hit that special button. <laughs> and then I play that. Come on, man! I just like. I think that's pretty good progress, really. And he goes, no, no, it is, it is. But I think the next step <laughs> should be learn a melody. You know what happens when you hit my special button? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> this theme music starts. <laughs> Welcome to the Two Guys One Podcast. It's our comedy podcast. It's about boring old white men. Look, you can justify it all you want to. It doesn't make it less dumb. Welcome to the Two Guys One Podcast, the Sodom and Gomorrah yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah. Whose story are you telling here? I'm one guy. I like it already. <laughs> and I'm the other. I was thinking about that dude the other day. Welcome to the Two Guys One Podcast. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of editing you got to do. Two Guys, One Podcast. Throw you a little free funny. Welcome to the Two Guys, One Podcast. I lose more and more respect for you every time we do this show. <laughs> Welcome to Two Guys, One Podcast. And this is the podcast. That's so bad. Especially the hand gesture. <laughs> I had to... It's, it's, it's. Maestro... All right, right on. Let's get it. Let's get into this motherfucker. All right, well, welcome to Two Guys on Podcast. I'm one guy, and I'm the other, and this is the podcast um, uh, episode uh, 105 here on Two Guys One Podcast. And first, right off off the top, I got a little housekeeping to do. I'm just going to tell you right now, there will not be an episode next week. I'm a off the bottom kind of guy. <laughs> You're an off the bottom kind of guy. Really? Do you take? Do you? T- like, do you, like, dig to the bottom of the cereal and stuff like that? No, why the fuck would I dig to the bottom of the cereal? There's delicious cereal on top. Well, you said I'm a off-the-bottom kind of guy. What do you, where do you take the, the something off the bottom? In everything. <laughs> Except for cereal? If we were roommates. You would want the bottom bump. No, I'd want the bottom half of the cereal. <laughs> so that you could eat through mine to get to yours? Yeah. That's cheating. That's not fair. Uh, what did I? Oh, I, I announced that I'm not doing a show next week. Did it? We hadn't talked about this really. I'm, I wanted to surprise you with this on air and see what you thought about it. We talked about doing a best of next week. Yeah. We talked about recording two episodes back to back. Yeah. I decided I'm going out of town. I'm taking a vacation. I'm going to take a vacation from this show too. You want me to tell you what you should do? <laughs> what should I do? Since we have a. A avid listener base out there. Yeah. And we do have this other show. Indeed. Just I should put, put in an episode? The, there you go. You know what? That's not a terrible idea. It's a preview of a review. That's not a terrible idea. So next week here on Pod on... No. Next week here on DoGuysOnePod.com, you'll get a little uh, a little taste of uh, something different from us. It's Pod on Pod. Uh, it's that's in the coming next back week. of the throat. It will. It really will. It, it gets stuck back there too. But with water, it's soluble. Um, <laughs> let's start. Uh, you want to go to the rundown? I am not water soluble, by the 
<laughs> That's just like cement. Boom. <laughs> Uh, really gums up the works in the shower, doesn't it? Uh, let's go to the rundown. Uh, we got a word of the day. Right on, right on. We do. Uh, we've got a fun fact. I don't even know what this is. I, I, <laughs> all right, it's new to me. Uh, we've got listener mail. Ooh. Yep, yep. Uh, we're going to talk about puns. We talk about puns? Yeah, we're going to talk we're talking about, puns. about puns. We do. We've got a. Uh, puns. We talk about puns. <laughs> we do. We ain't talking about words. <laughs> nope. Not, no, not words. We talk about <laughs> we puns. We just talk about puns. Uh, and then we're going to wrap things up with a word from Bob Ross. That'll be episode uh, 105 here on twoguysonepod.com. Uh, thanks to everybody uh, who's uh, checked out the show and shared it with friends. Uh, some new listeners, a little, little bit of movement in some of the old archives there. That's good to see. Those lucky sons of bitches. <laughs> Indeed, every like seriously. Sometimes I do think about somebody starting the show for from the from the beginning, like just finding it or whatever. And I'm like, oh, there's so much funny shit for you to listen to. There's so much funny shit, so much funny, and it's for all for free. It's for free. All for free. Uh, let's uh, start right now with the word of the day. So here's what's happening with the word of the day. Every week we bring you some 1920s slang. There's a word or a phrase from the 1920s falling out of the vernacular. Uh, we're going to bring it back by using it here on the show. This week's word of the day, tomato. If you say tomato, I say tomato. I, I know what a tomato is, man. What is it? It's a fucking to- it's a <laughs> no. vegetable. Okay. I'm sure somebody will argue that it's a fruit. <laughs> I think Whatever. it is. I'm pretty sure it is a fruit. But a tomato, uh, when used as I'm describing it, that's another way. That's another way to refer to a woman. That is a juicy tomato over there. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see that? And she is ripe for the picking, my friend. No, you don't what like that one. What is it? What is it that makes men? Because men came up with this shit. What is it that makes <laughs> Guys refer to women in any way, shape, or form as red fruit. Uh, well, I was thinking it wasn't so much about the fact that it was red fruit, but the fact that uh, tomato is juicy. That's a way that you yeah. describe it. And also, it's very curvy. Like, if you get a really pretty tomato, it's plump and, like, it's got, like, real sharp curves at the top and then it kind of comes in. Like, it's – I can see. That's a womanly figure. I could – I could I, – Dude, I, I don't it. know. that The fi- the shape of a to- – the shape of a tomato. <sighs> no, God you would damn. not – I'm not saying I want my woman shaped like a tomato. I'm just saying – I understand the femininity of the fruit. No. That's what I'm saying. No. You no, it, it has nothing to do with the shape of a tomato in any way. <laughs> All right, then. It's because it's squishy and warm. <laughs> Just like I like my woman. Where do you set your tomatoes in your house? I don't, I don't really keep tomatoes. On your windowsill. Do you? Yeah. You don't put them in the chiller? I th- I no. You, no. No. See, that shows my, I'm clueless. You set them on the windowsill? Yes. Well, that's not where you'd want to sit your women. Well. <laughs> if you're from Amsterdam. <laughs> yeah, and then, so, so you got the tomato. Right. And then a cherry. A cherry tomato? No. What? As in popped. I don't see how these things have anything to do with each other. You, you, know, you made fun They're of me. They're both red fruit. <laughs> so, 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 no. Oh, oh. <laughs> All right. We're going to try to use that sometime in the podcast seamlessly if possible. I don't want to use it. I was going to say, now that you made, now you made me not want to use it either. Um, you know our mutual friend was born on the 4th of July? Yeah. Yep, yep. Same, uh, same day as Tom fact. Cruise. Tom Cruise was actually born on the 4th of July? Pretty sure I saw a movie about that. No, no. That was the dude that he played in the movie, you jackass. The movie wasn't about Tom Cruise. I don't Tom I Cruise don't. was in the movie. It's pretty believable. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Here's a fun fact. July 5th, the day that this podcast will uh, go out. I say that. That's not true. Maybe. I don't know. I forget. I think it'll go out on the 5th. July 5th is the birthday of famous wrestler. How would it go out on July 5th? Friday's the 4th, man. 
Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, mm, I, last week I put it out. If you're if you're subscribed, you're technically you're getting them early sometimes. When I finish editing, sometimes you get them on Saturday afternoons. If you if you're subscribed, there you go, folks. We're nothing if not inconsistent. I, no, I'm saying it's like uh, on the website it doesn't get posted until Sunday morning. But you know, like if you're subscribed, you get a little you get a little something special, a little perk. Yeah, it's like a it's like a preview sale. <laughs> it's a preview sale for the podcast. Um, here's the fun fact, though. July fifth is the birthday of famous wrestler and all around fantastic guy James. Hillbilly Jim Morris. Ho! That was not... T- what you just did was Jim Hacksaw Duggan. Oh, well, who's Hillbilly Jim? Exactly. Why do I have this fun fact written down there? I, d- I was just about to ask. Uh, oh, wait a minute. No, I remember this guy. This guy was on the cartoon. You remember the the uh, Superstars cartoon? All right. You know Hillbilly Jim Superstars? No, no, I got it. It had like fucking Junkyard Dog on it and all those cats. Yeah, yeah, see? There he is. Hillbilly Jim. Yeah, no, I, I'm i with you. I don't know why I had that written down as a fun fact. That's interesting, though. Because it probably popped up in your news feed and you're being fucking lazy. You're like, ah, this is the word for the show. <laughs> Maybe. Here's a where are they where are they now? Where did where did where did Hillbilly Jim go? I bet he's dead. Mm, in twenty ten he was preparing for an upcoming lecture to students at Western Kentucky University. He's going to talk to uh business and marketing classes. They want to know the Hillbilly Jim story. Well, I'm sure he started out as a hilltopper. <laughs> um that's entirely possible. I don't know why I wrote that down. All right. Anyway, listener mail. Jamail! Jamail is here! Ooh! Yeah, this comes from Trusty Rusty. First time writer, long time listener. All right, Trusty. Uh, this is a would you rather. Mm. Would you rather date someone who owns a tanning bed or a water bed? I don't. I... First of all, how many people do you know that own tanning beds? You know a couple, right? My wife. Your wife owns a tanning bed? Yeah. Really? Yeah. No, she uses, she goes to the tanning bed. She doesn't, you, there's not a tanning bed in your house. I know because it's at her parents' house. Really? Yeah. Gives her a reason to go over and visit the folks. Seriously? Yeah. I didn't know she tans that much. She doesn't. Well, and why does she have the why? Why does she have? She did once upon a time. Oh yeah, it's just a good. So now she goes over there to tan, but she doesn't tan. She just hangs out with the folks. I guess that's weird, man. All right, well, see, I was going the other direction on this. I, the question was posed as either one would be a non desirable. Owning a tanning bed's a pretty extreme thing. How how is a water bed non desirable? First of all, have you have you ever slept on a water bed? Yeah, look, yeah, but man, there's only there's only one thing that matters to this question. All right. The fuckability factor. <laughs> well, yeah, you can't fuck on a tanning bed. Nah, but you can get some great nude photos. <laughs> that's a plus. That's a true story. That's a that, that's a tanning bed is a good excuse to get naked in the middle of the day. Yellow. <laughs> What do you what do you think the uh the tanning industry uh and the ratios of the of people who tan versus people who here's, sex are? Here's what gets me, man. What? Why I don't understand tanning salons. I don't understand tanning beds. I don't I don't understand why you pay for what is given for free. Oh no, I agree. I well, I say that. I I used a tanning bed like one summer when I was in high school, like for, I don't know, a couple months in a row before prom or something maybe. But uh, like I I really found that I enjoyed it because it was 20 minutes a day where I had to lay down and be still. Like and there was – like I I couldn't do anything. I couldn't be required to do anything. I was not – I couldn't. I couldn't require myself to do anything. I couldn't read anything. I couldn't. I wasn't. I was just laying there being I still. Can't do it, dude. And I and, fucking love the quiet. No, it's fucking. St- a tanning bed is an easy bake oven, 
for Giants. <laughs> I'm not going to do half the work for those guys. Hmm. I like mine toasted. Slightly. <laughs> Just a little crispy on one side. Um, now, the flip side, though, I, I did own a waterbed when I was a kid. My, well, my parents owned a waterbed when I was a kid. All right. Would you rather fuck in a tanning bed or on a waterbed? Well, on a waterbed, absolutely. Okay. Okay. I answered the question. Yeah. What'd you pick? I, I, I said waterbed because nobody said anything about sleeping. I don't have to sleep in the waterbed. The waterbed is a terrible rusty, thing to sleep in. I want to know what trusty Rusty <laughs> would pick because it sounds like he didn't put a whole lot of thought into this question. It is obviously... The waterbed, and it's not even close. <laughs> what is a tanning bed? What the tanning bed has no benefit better than the waterbed. Oh, you can get tan. I have the fucking sun. <laughs> oh, well, you can. You know, it's nice and it's nice and warm there. So's a hot fucking shower. Yeah, but occasionally on the waterbed, you're gonna get stuck to the bed itself. Like literally, like you'll have to peel your skin off and lose the epidermis. Why, why are you sleeping on the rubber of the bed? Well, if you fuck on the bed, the sheets come off of the thing because the whole thing moves. I don't know if you're familiar with There the is more than one way to fuck. <laughs> what? If what you are currently doing is moving the sheets, do something else. <laughs> I'm saying on a waterbed, much fucking is going to move the sheets. That's like, unless you fucking for just a second. No. Shit's going to get moved around a little bit. Wait, you know what? Well, that's kind of Stuff's a fuck, gonna come That's loose. kind of a fucked up thing. You make a waterbed, but you don't make a fitted sheet that will stay on it? <laughs> hey, we just don't have the technology. <sighs> Priorities in this country. Of course, the other thing is that every now and again, like somebody's going to get trapped in between the mattress and the uh, and the, and the the wooden frame. Or like, at least a leg, s- and that shit will cut off some circulation. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm trapped. I'm trapped. <laughs> I need the jaws of life to get out of my bed. That's no good. Well, and here's the thing is, dude, a water bed is not, it's not cushy. No, it's hard and cold. Yeah. It's like fucking on a corpse. <laughs> All right. Changed my mind. <laughs> Completely changed my mind. You going back to the Easy Bake Oven for Giants? Yeah, no. Nah. I'm de- no, nah, I'm taking the water bed. But now I'll never fuck on one just because of that analogy. It's going to sleep real still. Yeah. Don't want to wake the dead. All right. Uh, let's talk about some puns. BuzzFeed.com. Excuse me, BuzzFeed.com. It's late, folks. BuzzFeed.com has collected um, 21 puns so dumb they're funny. I used to go fishing with Skrillex, but he kept dropping the bass. That's not good. (laughs) That's not funny. It's not so bad it's good. It's just not good. What's the worst thing about throwing a party in space? No one can hear you scream. You have to plan it. <laughs> okay, that was pretty good. That was way better than the first one. Uh, yesterday, a clown held the door open for me. I think it was a nice jester. Mm. <laughs> I was walking through a quarry and said to the foreman, That's a big rock. Boulder, he replied. So I puffed out my chest and shouted, look at that enormous rock over there. <laughs> I love that joke. I love that one. That was awesome. That reminds me of um, one of my favorite episodes of Taxi is whenever Christopher Lloyd is uh, is going to get his uh, his license to be a taxi driver, right? Okay. Uh, well, he was going to become a taxi driver, but he didn't have his license. He has to go take his driver test. So he's taking the test. And like Tony Danz and the other guys are kind of behind him, and uh, they're trying to cheat to help him get through it. Well, one of the questions is, "What does a yellow light mean?" And he turns around, and is like, "What does a yellow light mean?" And they're like, "Slow down." <laughs> what does a yellow <laughs> light mean? And they're like, "Slow down." And he's like, "What?" <laughs> It's just a good bit. It is. That's a good joke. That joke That joke will stand the test of time. How do you make Andy freeze? Steal her blanket. 
I was going to say put her outside. <laughs> it was an emotional wedding. Even the cake was in tears. <laughs> no. <laughs> nope. No, sir. Not going to do it. Uh, what Not going to do it. What does a house wear? What? A dress. <laughs> I didn't like that one either. There was an explosion at the cheese factory in France. Debris everywhere. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a really, So far, instead of 21 puns, this should be eight puns. <laughs> it's hard to explain puns to a kleptomaniac because they always take things literally. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that was a bad literal joke. Why couldn't the bicycle stand up on its own? It was too tired. Mm. <laughs> Did you hear about the guy who jumped off a bridge in Paris? No. He was insane. That, that's not <laughs> <sighs> it seems like it seems like you are you are I feel like I've been played. <laughs> that I've written a bunch of puns? <laughs> no. You have some kind of list or or something that you think is interesting or funny. And I'm sure when you're at home preparing, you're laughing to yourself about like 95% of the stuff that you say. Almost all of it. It's not good. Some of it, no, some of it's hilarious. No, sir. Uh, Two antenna were on a roof. They fell in love and got married. The service was great, but the reception was excellent. (laughs) Did Did you hear the joke about the German sausage? I'm excited about this one. It was the worst. <laughs> That's pretty good. All right. Here's the last one. Thank the Lord. The furniture store keeps calling me to come back, but all I wanted was a one night stand. No, see, again, my wife already did that pun. Your wife already did <laughs> How did yeah. she do it? She did it better? Yeah, at a, at a, Halloween, at a Halloween party in, um, in college, she came as a one night stand. She like took a box and made like drawers and actually on came it. as a one night stand. And she put that over her body, and then her head came through the top of the box, and she had a lampshade on top of her head. All right. And I said, "Hey, girl, can I get in your drawers? <laughs> Let me get up in them drawers." Uh, the panty drawer was not the top one. <laughs> it was all the way at the bottom. From it's also where she kept her cherries. They stay fresh in the bottom drawer. Uh, um, that was a uh, that was a, a, a you know, shit. I was trying. To that find. was a fruit joke. Yes, that was a fruit joke. I was looking for a way to say tomato. You didn't. I didn't. I can't. I couldn't think of one. Mm-mm. All right, from puns to misspellings. These are too cute. These are too fucking cute. I read these today and I cried. 22 children's hilariously intentionally mis- uh, unintentional misspellings. It's a little girl holding a sign. You do understand this is visual humor. Yeah, but it'll, it'll work. It'll work. Okay. I'm going to share the link on Facebook, All right. too. Let's we- spend 15 minutes of an audio show to share a link. All right. All right. Fine. Fine. I'm not going to share it then. You Thank poo-pooed you. On my, you poo-pooed on my idea. All right. Instead, we're going to go to 10 Golden Age Sidekicks. Whose names sound like gross sex moves. I'm down with this one. <laughs> this is a good article. I lined this up and I was like, yeah, okay. All right. This this character debuted in 1941. He's created by Bill Finger, uh, one of the guys who's behind uh, Batman. He's not mentioned some, a lot. Some would say the guy behind yeah. Batman. Yeah, indeed. Who uh, came up with Robin. And the Batcave and Gotham. And uh, everything. Yeah, lots of other stuff. Uh, Bill Finger, Erwin Hassan. Uh, this guy was a sidekick for the original Green Lantern, Alan Scott. He was a cab driver for the Apex Broadcasting Company, where Scott worked, and was notable for his thick Brooklyn accent, uh, with which he called the Green Lantern, Lantern. Hey, the Green Lantern over there. Over here. You know what my name was? My name was Doby Dickles. That's a good name. Doby Dickles is a great name. Double D. Uh, to perform this move, you need a man's bowler hat. Clean towels and three quarters full jar of pickle brine, still cold from the refrigerator. I uh, I do like uh, double constant alliterations, uh, and there are a ton of those in yeah. in, in fucking comics. comic books. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
this character was introduced in 1947 by our, our, our artist C.C. Beck and comics' greatest human, Otto Bender. Uh, he was a tiger who was given the ability to speak and walk upright via a magical serum in order to prove his innocence when he stood accused of killing a person. After making his way to America and accidentally terrifying people all over the place, he became the best friend of Captain Marvel. You might know him now as Shazam and the whole Marvel family once they had cleared up the misunderstanding. He would go on to assuage people's fears of him by wearing a tweed jacket. This is a tiger in a tweed jacket with a hat, a cane. He's smoking a cigar. He's arm in arm with, with Shazam. Can I, can I try to think of uh, – can I tell you what his name is? Sh- certainly. Uh, uh, Gentleman Pussy. <laughs> Gentleman Pussy would be an even better move. This is the Mr. Talky Tawny. That's Talky t- that doesn't sound sexual at all. Mr. Talkie Tani, this move requires a black sock, a digital audio recorder, and electric hair clippers. I don't I don't care. Like It only works if your partner's a natural redhead. <laughs> this article promised names of sidekicks that were sexual. You don't think Mr. Talkie Tani You put sounds like- talking and sex together, it doesn't talking and sex is oil and water. Not talking, Tawny. Talky. Is in T A W K I, Talkie Tani, Mr. Talkie Tani. Still sounds like you're saying Talkie. All right, then. Uh, this next character is the creation of master cartoonist Jack Cole. He debuted in 1942 as a small time crook who was able to succeed in his criminal endeavors due to a magical spell that ensured he was always protected by Mother Nature, which was placed on him after he rescued a wizard from drowning. Eventually, the spell was more or less forgotten about, and he was reformed, becoming wait, wait, plastic what was the man's... Spell? What was the spell that she performed on him? Uh, he was always protected by Mother Nature. Okay. Uh, after he was reformed, he became Plastic Man's bumbling but whimsical assistant, readily identifiable by his polka dot shirt and straw boater. What is a straw? Oh, a, straw, a boat hat. The big flat, like the... Uh, a boat hat. Yeah. Uh, his uh, his name would be Gappy McFingers. <laughs> He's the Woozy Winks. Mm, that's, I, can, I can dig that. To properly carry out a Woozy Winks, you have to wait until your partner has fallen asleep after a particularly rousing session and then sneak into the kitchen and eat all the, refu- out of, eat all the food out of the refrigerator. High fives, dud. That's the Woozy Winks. Uh... Woozy Winks sounds more to me like um, like you got to get the tomato drunk before you uh, <laughs> damn it. it. All right, this character uh, was an affable yokel with inhumanly long arms and legs who came to the big city to become, in his own words, a detective. Uh, a creation of Bill Finger and Irwin Hasten in 1942, he went on to accompany Ted Grant, the Wildcat, on many of his Golden Age adventures before more or less disappearing forever, except for one 2000s appearance in a JSA classified and, uh, like, two relevant Google results. Um, this character's name? His name is Spuds Fillin' Jack. That's close, actually. Not really at all. Stretch Skinner is this man's name. Hence the long arms and legs. That doesn't sound good at all. Yeah. This move is... That sounds is, like a terrible... Any sex move that ends in Skinner, <laughs> not good. This move is on some Hellraiser-style jazz, so it's not recommended for inexperienced practitioners. Make sure you are up to date on your tetanus shots and that you have a sufficiently uh, a sufficient supply of hydrogen peroxide on hand. Yeah, that's, that's a, a high-difficulty uh, move. This character was the original Woo Girl. She was introduced by William Moulton Marston and H.G. Peter in 1942, made fast friends with Wonder Woman. She quickly became known for her love of candy, her Rubenesque figure, and her bold, brassy Texas attitude. She was the spirited leader of the Beta Lambda sorority chapter at Holiday College, and together with the other Holiday Girls, she would cheer Wonder Woman on with her catchphrase of, Woo Woo! I, uh, I, uh, I, I I know her special move and her name. All right then. Uh, her name is uh, Clitoris Cowgirl, and her move is uh, the Wampa Canetta Womp Down. All right. What was what, the Wampa Canetta Womp Down do? Uh, you get Womp Down with her Wampa Canetta. Her name's Etta Candy. And uh, to carry out an Etta Candy, you need a novelty-sized cowboy hat, a sorority paddle, and a one-pound bag of Blow Pop brand lollipop treats and assorted flavors. There is a more advanced version of this move named after Etta's golden age boyfriend, 
Oscar Sweet Gulper. No. <laughs> this next character was in, uh, introduced in 1941. Jerry Siegel, uh, he of Superman fame, and Bernard Bailey found that interest in their feature in more fun comics, The Spectre, was waning. So to help boost the popularity of their Alabaster Avenger, they added a comedy relief character in uh, the form of this guy. Uh, he's kind of the nerdy Kramer from Seinfeld. He's an amateur sleuth who modeled himself after fictional detectives. By the time of World War II, Percival had more or less taken over for the strip uh, with the Spectre's... Oh, I gave the name away. It's Percival Pop, the super cop. I was kind of hoping for Bumbling Dick. <laughs> the Bumbling Dick. Uh, I did the Bumbling Dick one time. That shit is not recommended. Not, not even after you've had a few drinks. Uh, Percival had more or less uh, taken over the strip to do the Percival. Uh, let's see. This move was popularized in 2007 by the song Crank That due to the hip hop artist Soulja Boy encouraging his young male listeners to super cop that young lady. Yeah. Percival Pop, the super cop. Superman! I'm Percival Pop, the super cop. No, that's terrible. That's terrible. I will find you anywhere you hide as long as it's within three feet of my front door. <laughs> in 1940, in the pages of Wow Comics by France Heron and Jack Kirby, this character was introduced. He was the adopted son of District Attorney Brian Butler, who moonlighted as the mask avenger Mr. Scarlet. Presumably, his M.O. was to murder criminals in the conservatory with a candlestick. The duo were so successful at fighting crime that they ended up putting Mr. Scarlet's district attorney alter ego out of work. So he had to support the family through a series of odd jobs. This move and this character, Pinky the Whiz Kid. No. Yes. Pinky Pinkerton Butler. To best prepare for this move, you should probably pull out those plastic tarps you got at that Gallagher show and scrub your hands thoroughly, especially under the nails. Um... A little known fact, and I think that Pinky should get uh, all the credit in the world for this. All right. Um, he actually um, did the first written record of the Shocker. <laughs> I don't doubt that, actually. Uh, this next character, uh, let's see. This next character was introduced in 1941. Uh, Dodds was a more or less straight ahead tights wearing superhero. Uh, well, shit, I gave away the name. Sand. Uh, no, 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 let's see, where is it? Oh, no, okay. Uh, the Golden Age Sandman Wesley Dodds, you mostly think of him as a gas mask wearing, sleeping gas spewing, fedora wearing pulp hero. By 1941, Dodds was more or less a straight ahead tights wearing superhero with no sleep gun. To add to that image, Mort Weisinger and Paul Norris gave the Sandman a kid sidekick in the form of this character, the nephew of Dodd's girlfriend, Dion Belmont. Sandy had a few things in common with Pinky Butler. They both used their regular first names as their secret crime-fighting identities, uh, and their best adventures were drawn by Jack Kirby. They also both fought crime in short pants, and they both sound like something that should be number one on this list if you're picking, from what I'm, if you're picking up what I'm putting down. This character's name, Sandy the Golden Boy. I don't see what's wrong with that. Sandy the Golden Boy? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> my point is, keep those Gallagher tarps out for this move. Sandy the Golden Boy and Pinky the Whiz Kid both sound a lot like a golden shower maneuver. Am I wrong? You got to pay extra. If a, modern reaver, uh, if a modern reader knows of the original Golden Age Shining Knight having a sidekick at all, they might think of Percival Sheldrake, the squire, who would grow up to become the Batman-inspired knight with his son. How fucking popular is Percival? Percival's pretty, pretty popular. Or was at one time, anyway. Um, what do, what do, no, she, that, was, that was too complicated. I don't even know. Sir Butch. Uh, all right, here we go. This is the last one. This character's alter ego is known as Jimmy Long. He's a kid from New York's Chinatown, introduced by Moritz Weisinger and Meskin in 1942 when he helped badass cowboy hero Vigilante track down a Japanese spy who was trying to frame Jimmy's grandfather and start a gang war in Chinatown. Okay. Stuff was surprisingly not that racist for a 1940s Asian America character. Since this is the last one. Yes. And since it's done with triads. All right. I'm going to give this character three different names you can pick. Okay. Buddy Hurricane, Sugar Chantel, 
Trouble Johnson. <laughs> I like Trouble Johnson. And in fact, you and I should start a comic based around Trouble Johnson, <laughs> I think. Uh, Trouble, Trouble Johnson... Uh, <laughs> Trouble Johnson can only have his superpowers when he has an erection. So anytime he hears someone's in danger, he has to immediately masturbate until he gets hard. Trouble Johnson is up. in a gimp suit and handcuffs, and he can only save you. His bat signal is really just the safe word, kangaroo. <laughs> kangaroo. I'm going to hop, 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 hop on it. Uh, this character's name is not uh, Troubles Johnson, unfortunately. Uh, this character's name is Stuff the Chinatown Kid. <laughs> that sounds like a <laughs> sentence. <Yep. laughs> this move, this move is actually illegal in forty-seven states and the entirety of the European Union. Please do not stuff even, the China Kid. <laughs> please do not even in the privacy of your own bedroom. Stuff the Chinatown kid. Well, see, the thing is, is once you stuff the Chinatown kid, you have to beat it like it's a pinata. <laughs> beat, 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 beat it up like a drummer. I think that's the line. Beat it up like a drummer. Yeah, that's the line. No. Anyway. All right. Uh, that's about to wrap things up here on this uh, super 4th of July patriotic episode of Two Guys, One Pod. And if you don't want to trouble Johnson, you be sure to wrap things up. <laughs> uh, that's trouble for not just Johnson. That's trouble for, for Jameson, too. Um, I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> no. I can't. I'm just looking forward to vacation, man. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go up into the hills of Tennessee, reload my funny. Because there's a lot to laugh at in Tennessee. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Yep. All right. Uh, before we leave you today, don't forget to stop by twoguysonepod.com. Check out the archives. Check out the videos. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, etc. Wherever you are on social media, we're probably there too. Uh, and uh, tell a friend about us while we're away. Tell two friends. Indeed. Check out our other podcast. We'll be uh, giving you an episode of Pod on Pod next week for you to try that out in your feeds. Hope you enjoy it. Uh, And you can subscribe and find more at podonpod.com. Before we leave you, we always give you a word from Bob Ross. This comes from bobrossquotes.com. It helps you get you through the week. It really does, doesn't it? It does me anyway. Sometimes when I'm a little blue, I just uh, look up a little Bob. Here we go. This week's word from Bob Ross. Trees cover up a multitude of sins. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I agree 100%. You bury a motherfucker and you plant a big tree over him, that motherfucker ain't going to get found. You know, here's what, I, here's what I was thinking about because... I don't think that's what Bob meant. This episode had a possibility of having a guest on, right? Indeed. So I was thinking about the guest on our show, and it is amazing that whenever we get a guest, they have almost have never listened to the show. Oh, that's not true. Uh, Julie, the, fir- the first time a guest comes on. Oh, yeah. Well, the first time, yes. Right. Many of them have not heard the show. And then I thought, man, people want to be on podcasts. Do you know how easy it would be to be a serial killer? Set it up, set up a podcast, and here's your podcast. Much in the vein of uh, it, it would be like Hellraiser meets Welcome to Night Vale. All right. Except... You lure your guest into your studio, which is really a table with two microphones and everything is covered in visqueen. All right. You torture this motherfucker and record it and send it out there. And there's going to be these fucking like ICP idiots. Right. Right. Some juggalos. There's going to be all these fucking crazy fetish people that will tune in to listen to that and they're gonna think it's just a show it's just for entertainment the only person that really knows what's going on is the poor fucker you're torturing to death it's a terrible idea no that's a fantastic idea right it's like then and then what would you do you would like take his body and go fucking plant it under a tree (laughs) and then fill that shit in right he'd be like brandon stark for death. Uh, uh, no, no. And then you take a cell phone and you toss it on a fucking train driving by. You'd never get caught. 
this is this is this is it's it's like it's like those porno. Look, I'm saying trees can cover up a multitude of sins, man. It's like the it's like the porno casting couch videos, except podcasting and and murder instead of fucking. But people won't know that you you're know, really like murdering the, people. You get the disclaimer at the beginning. <laughs> Uh, people from all over the world come to be on my podcast. Little do they know that I don't have a podcast and I'm not going to be recording them. No, no, you don't do that. Like oh. you, like you play it like it's a show. Oh, like you segue it like it's a show, and it's like for those of you who are about to get your jollies off, and you can take listener submissions. Like listeners would write in how they want you to torture the next guy, <sighs> and then their accessories to murder. Holy fuck! <laughs> that what a tangle web do we weave? I think iTunes would block that one. I, I bet Stitcher would let it in, though. No, but you play it like no one. No one will know that you're really fucking killing this guy. Next week on Two Guys One Pod dot com. No, not really. Please don't kill me. I have a wife. Oh, you have a wife. Yeah. Hey, if I'm not if I'm not back in two weeks, she won't be needing these. <laughs> Nick. If I'm not back in two weeks, you know what happened. <laughs> That would be awesome. Blame blame other guy. Uh, all right. Until next week. Well, until two weeks from now. I'm one guy. And I'm the other. And this has been the podcast.
you felt like we did what? I felt like we needed some oomph. Well, we've talked about masturbation. We've talked about uh, edible complexes. We've talked about diarrhea. I th- I'm pretty sure that that's the first time we've talked about torturous murder. You could make a movie out of that. Uh, no, yeah, you know that's exactly what you could do. You could make a movie out of that. Guys, like you know, he just be b- picks people up at the coffee shop. Not or like whatever. a good movie, but one of these part of like these. Uh, yeah, like the three million dollar horror movies. Yeah, or like Tales from the Crypt or whatever. It'd be yeah. like a little one of those. 